Hello and welcome back to, or for the very first time to the channel, I am William Gwynn and today I'm going to be talking about more of my favourite reads of 2022. I couldn't limit it to just 10, I lack that discipline. So I had 30, I've already done the first part of this series and today I'm going to be talking about my 20th favourite read of 2022 all the way down to the 11th favourite and then Perhaps a week from now, I'll have the next video up, which is my very favourite reads of the year. But as I said, today we're doing the 20th favourite to the 11th favourite. And I read 107 books in 2022, and it was my best personal reading year ever. It's the first time I hit that milestone of 100 books in an annual year. So there was a lot to choose from and so I'm really looking forward to talking about some of my favourites today. Do let me know in the comments below if you've read any of these books, if you've got any similar recommendations and also are any of these on your TBR. But without any further ado, let's get on into it. In the number 20 spot and the first one I'm talking about today is going to be Night's Shadow by Sebastian de Castell. This is the second instalment of his epic fantasy series, The Great Coats. And at the core of this book, and one of the best parts, probably the best part in my opinion, is the bromance. The three main characters at the core, Falco, Kess and Brassi, who are three great coats. They were guards for the king, but the king died about a decade ago now. But they still have a bit of hope that they can carry on their king's dream. And these three... They're so brilliant together. They annoy each other, they irritate each other, they argue the whole time, but they really, really love each other. And you can see where if they didn't have each other, they would probably give up and lose their motivation. Their drive is to help and provide for the others to keep them going. And when one falls, the others help them up. And that is at the core of the story. So whilst it provides so many hilarious scenes and just a witty uh, dialogue throughout the entire book which Sebastian de Castell was just brilliant at. It also provides those kind of more serious uh, undertones, that idea of friendship, identity, belonging and those ideas that really drive the story. It's about camaraderie, it's about friendship, it's about what you would do about sacrificing yourself for those who you love and I love that Whilst you've got, as I said, those more humorous and amusing themes and humorous moments, I love a book that can play with both and it uses humor to further those more serious themes and add depth to the characters. And this is my favorite installment of the Great Coat series because in this book, I think there are most of the more unique character arcs where every single character has different reactions to these scenarios that play out. And I love how it really comes into play for the greater plot, but also there's more that this more intimate story within it. And also the ending of this book, the culmination of events is brilliant. A lot of surprises and twists and turns that really took me by surprise. And it really is a roller coaster of a ride. And so yeah, that is my 20th favorite read of 2022. And it is Night Shadow by Sebastian de Castell. And then next up, I have Of Blood and Fire by Ryan Cahill. This is self-published indie uh, book, which is fantasy, no surprise there. And if you doubt the quality of indie publishing, try out The Bound and The Broken, which begins with Of Blood and Fire. This is a great mix of traditional and more modern fantasy elements and motifs and tropes with kind of that kind of nostalgic feel that Ryan Cahill manages to provide, but then he mixes it with kind of subverting your expectations and providing that kind of fresher perspective that we love to read, or at least I do in modern fantasy. And I love it when authors combine the two. Papa Gwynn kind of does that, I think, where people say he's a bit of a mix of the nostalgia of Tolkien, but a mix of kind of Gemmel characters on that Gemmel vibe and so yeah it, just, uh, it feels like Ryan Cow is in kind of a similar slither there so if you really like The Faith and the Fallen I highly recommend The Bound and The Broken and there's a great cast of characters I've read Book 2 of Darkness and Light which is also really great and I've read the novella The Fall as well and the third instalment is coming out in 2023 so it's a great time to read book one and catch up with the series. And then in the number 18 spot, I have Mort by Terry Pratchett. I've only read Good Omens by Terry Pratchett before this, and of course he co-wrote that with Neil Gaiman. But in Mort, this is the first book I've read of his absurdist fantasy series called Discworld, which he is so renowned for and so many people absolutely adore. So Mort, he is a boy who is somehow made apprentice to death. So there we go. <laughs> We've got a very unique premise there already. And Terry Pratchett, a bit 
I was saying a bit like Sebastian Castell how amusing it is. This is amusing in a very different way and it's a lot more light-hearted, but it's so, so funny. I was really laughing out loud at multiple moments. But again, like I was saying earlier, I love it when humour comes into play to really enhance and enforce those more serious themes as well. And whilst we've got a lot of the humour and, as I said, those laugh out loud moments that really feels like um, it's a bit of a palate cleanser and it breaks up kind of the depression of most books that I read. It also has a commentary about death, identity, purpose, belonging, and a lot of things like that. It's quite thought-provoking as well. It's got a philosophical edge which it, Terry Pratchett allows for it not to dominate the book and uh, bring it down but he allows to just uh, he just puts those thoughts in there and allows you to mull over them as you're continuing this very unique and fresh story and I really cannot wait to read more in the world of Discworld by Terry Pratchett and the next one I read by him will be Guards Guards which I hear is a lot of people's favourite of this series so yeah I absolutely love more hence why it's my 18th favourite read of 2022 and so there we go this is Mort and I'm really looking forward to reading some more or Terry Pratchett in the future. Next up I have some fiction and this is Shaggy Bane by Douglas Stewart, the 2020 Booker Prize winner and this is set in the 1980s, I think it goes into the early 90s, but it is predominantly about the relationship between a mother and her son in Glasgow. So in the early book it kind of takes a little while to adapt to the Glaswegian vernacular but it wasn't jarring to me at all, it was more immersive and it felt authentic and it goes far enough that you understand what it means but not too far that you're just lost in the conversation so I thought Douglas Stewart struck a great balance there and this is about a boy his name is Shuggy and his mother is called Agnes and it's their relationship and there are moments of utter joy and I really just felt that Douglas Stewart he had a grip on my heart in this book where as I said there's moments of absolute happiness but then those of absolute depravity and depression and the tragedy that this family go through is just it just blew me away it was very very moving very emotional uh, it is a hard-hitting read and again it's a very serious book and one that I absolutely loved I, I thought Douglas Stewart did a great job of not um not being over sentimental but still providing that emotion and really as I said really engaging me in everything that was happening I felt really tense in certain scenes I had no idea where this was going and there's this just overarching sense of dread as well so yeah not a happy read as I was saying with more to hardly ever read happy books so that was a palate cleanser but this it's still one that I highly recommend very moving some very powerful messages and overall just a brilliantly written book and then in the number 16 spot, I've got the first historical fiction on this list, and it is Essex Dogs by Dan Jones. So this is historical fiction set in the early days of the Hundred Years' War, even though it wasn't actually 100 years, but we'll let that slide for now. And so, yes, the Hundred Years' War between England and France. And I love how Dan Jones, he doesn't just show the bits of warfare that we see in every single historical fiction book. He lingers on the aspects which are probably perceived as boring by most writers hence why they don't include it in their books but I love how Dan Jones provides an interesting twist in that we see the grueling marches we see the struggle for supplies we see people occupying abandoned settlements and more and I absolutely love how Dan Jones allows that to come into play really showing the full scope of warfare not just battle politics battle there's far far more to it and we see this through the eyes the lenses of those who have been who are only here for money they're not patriots they're here to survive this is how they make their livelihood there's no patri patriotism here there are some patriots but they're more looked upon in absolute fury by those below and seen as naive but anyway that's one of the commentaries throughout this book which i found very very interesting and as i said it's very unique historical fiction if you're reading a, quite a few historical fiction books and you're thinking, oh, they feel a bit the same, especially military fantasy, then definitely try this out. It's fresh, unique, brilliantly written, and a great cast of characters at the centre. Whilst Dan Jones does a brilliant job of presenting the mindset, the medieval mindset and really um, putting across the hegemonic values of the time, he allows there to be heart as well amongst this main group of characters who are called the Essex Dogs, and they're a little group of, I think, seven or eight. And it says on the back, some men fight for glory, others fight for coin, the Essex Dogs fight for each other and that is where the heart is provided and I did a full review with my brother Ed on the Brothers Gwyn channel so if you want to check out my deeper thoughts on this book go check that video out but anyway for now that is my 16th favourite read of 2022. Next up in the number 15 spot, halfway through this list now and I have The Pagan Lord and this is by Bernard Cormor, the 7th, in I believe it's the 7th, it may actually be the 6th. 
No, it's the seventh. It is the seventh installment of the Saxon stories, better known now as The Last Kingdom by the awesome historical fiction writer Bernard Cornwell. And Uhtred is one of the greatest characters of all time. Bernard Cornwell has this thing where in some of the books they feel a bit like templates, new bad guy, same story kind of thing, but this is different. This is unique and fresh. And the final 30, 40 pages are probably the best of any Saxon stories book. And there's 13 installments, so there's a lot to choose from. It's probably the best out of any section, uh, in my opinion. I actually loved how it was written. It's just so much about the character. There's been quite a few books building towards this. And there's a few revelations as well. And the consequences of this battle will echo in the aftermath of what the next few books will deal with. And I absolutely love how the Pagan Lord really shows an extra level of growth for Uhtred. This is kind of the beginning of him leaving his prime. He's an older warrior now. He's not too old, but he's left his prime now and he has to use his mind cunning a bit more. And so, yeah, the Pagan Lord, really interesting. Bernard Cormier, as always, provides an entertaining and engaging story. And the Pagan Lord just went above and beyond what I was expecting in this because the two books before I thought was a bit of a dip in the series, but this was well and truly a return to form. Hence, why it's on my list of favourite books of 2022. Next up, I have Until the Last by Mike Shackle, the third and final instalment of The Last War. This is an epic fantasy trilogy that begins with We Are the Dead, then continues with A Fool's Hope, and as I said, finishes and concludes with Until the Last. Every single book in this series is, in my opinion, absolutely incredible. It's in one of my favourite series of all time for sure. It sticks the landing and it begins and ends just brilliantly. And this book, it is a chunky book, but Mike Shackle, his writing style, his authorial voice uh, provides that really fast paced breakneck pace where a lot of these chapters end on little cliffhangers where not not having to be action every single scene, but there's an event that each chapter evolves around. And I love how Mike Shackle frames that in a way that still feels natural and organic. Whereas quite a few authors have tried to do that, but it feels a bit stunted in my opinion. But as I said, Mike Shackle avoids that problem, avoids that hurdle and provides a really engaging read that is really fast paced. But also he allows for those slower moments to come into play as well, which you need, I think, especially when a big part of a book is action. You need those slower moments that the moments where it slows down a bit just to enforce that character growth, show their reactions to the scene and allow you to just take a breath, a deep breath in and Mike Shackle provides a great balance between these different story elements, I think anyway. And I really highly recommend this. This is one of those series that I think so many people would enjoy and not enough have picked it up. So this is one that I'll be forcing in people's faces for many a year to come. And my opinion will not change for sure. I absolutely loved We Are the Dead. I was raving about it. And I was a bit worried reading this sequel because I was thinking, oh, can it live up to it? And it really did. And then I had that same problem with this. You're always scared, or at least I am, when I'm reading the finale to an awesome trilogy because the ending is often what you think about first when you've read a whole series. And it also often becomes the most important part when you think on is a series successful and until the last I'm very happy to say provides a brilliant satisfying and moving ending so yeah highly recommend the series and until the last is one of my favorite reads of 2022. In the number 13 spot, I have The Women of Troy by Pat Barker. She is one of the authors of recent times who is trying to address the Greek myths, Greek retellings, and allow the women of those myths to be more central because too often they've been pushed to the periphery where they should be major figures in this story, but they're often neglected and the focus placed on those such as Agamemnon, Odysseus, Achilles, Patroclus, Hector, Priam and so on and so forth. So many of these characters who they are interesting characters but to neglect the women has just been wrong over so many decades and tales and I also read David Gemmell's Troy series trilogy in 2022 which is really great and he does that as well. He doesn't just do what many retellings have done and just focus on the men of the stories and the women of Troy by Pat Barker is brilliant. I've done a review for book one The Silence of the Girls on the channel. It's one of my favourite books of all time and the women of Troy is a sequel. This is about what happens once Troy has actually fallen, a part of the story we often don't hear as much about. And Pat Barker continues to provide really fresh perspectives on these characters. And I absolutely love her writing style. It just clicks with me. It's beautiful, but stripped back and efficient as well. It's not purple prose for sure, but she has these just lines every now and then, which just, I just have to stop, read it again and again and write it down and mull over it. It's just brilliant. It's rare that you find a book like this and 
when it comes along, you have to make the most of it and just suck in every single moment. That's why I tried to take it slow. I could have easily read this into sittings, but I just forced myself. I had to show some discipline to just slow down, take it in and not binge it. Because I find if you binge something, then sometimes you can, uh, you may not enjoy it as much as you may have. Well, you do, but then when you reflect on it, you don't remember all the details as much. So yeah, that was my idea with the women of Troy and I absolutely loved it. Hence why it's my 13th favorite read of 2022. I highly recommend book one, The Science of the Girls. And of course, I highly recommend The Women of Troy. I think this is one of some of these books I'm talking about. I can appreciate that. Maybe not everyone would love them, but I think The Women of Troy is one that many people would find enjoyable to read. And in the number 12 spot, going to some horror and that is Let the Right One In. But this is not just simply a horror. That would be a gross injustice. Whereas there are vampires in this and there are some horror aspects for sure. This is a social commentary as well and this is set in I believe Sweden at least, definitely in Scandinavia and it is about a boy who is being bullied and he meets a girl at night uh, who solves a Rubik's Cube on the first time she's ever seen one. So I wonder what she is. He only sees her at night. Anyway and then some murders begin to happen and it's such a brilliant book where it could have just been a simple horror story but John Linkfist really expands on that and he allows it to be a social commentary and the big question is who are the real monsters? Is it the vampires or is it the people who commit atrocities and really just do terrible things such as bullying for their own gain and so that's a great question that I love John Linkfist presents. There's a few books. Carrie, I think, kind of presents that idea as well. And I love it when books do that. I really want to read a few more like that. So if you've got any more suggestions that really battle with that theme, please do let me know in the comments below. I also did a review for this on the channel. I did a joint one of Carrie and Let the Right One In. So do check that out if you're interested in my deeper thoughts. But as I said, Let the Right One In is my 12th favourite read of 2022. And then the final book that I'm talking about today, and it is Babel by R.F. Kuang. This is historical fantasy at its best. At the centre we have a boy of Chinese descent from Canton. His family die of a disease and a mysterious professor turns up and says that he will take him to England if he agrees to study classics, maintain his study of the Chinese language and also learn eat more English as well and so very strange preposition but a brilliant premise and I love how this story then goes to the boy being placed in the translation branch of Oxford University which is called Babel and you've got this more wider story which is about Brit the British Empire colonialism this kind of magic element which really comes into play brilliantly but then you've got a more intimate story at the centre of it about conscience, identity, belonging. Well, this boy absolutely loves it. feels like a, a dream come true to be able to study at Oxford University. And he loves translating things and looking at other languages. But he knows what his studies are facilitating. And I won't go further into depth, more, go into more depth than that because it may spoil parts which I found so so exciting to unravel myself and Babel brilliantly written. I read The Poppy War by R.F. Kong which didn't quite click with me so I was a bit apprehensive reading Babel but I should not have been because this is absolutely brilliant and so if you did not enjoy The Poppy War then this may be for you and if you enjoyed The Poppy War then I also think this is a book for you so basically anyone who is anyone needs to read Babel and I absolutely loved it. Thought Ara Kong just did a brilliant job across every storytelling aspect and there is a brilliant combination of events. I think there's one or two little plot holes but they're not too major in my opinion anyway and I just it didn't affect the story too much to me and you can forgive authors for one or two little things like that. So overall just an absolutely exceptional book that has really just lingered on my mind in the months since I finished it and you know a book is truly great when it does that or it has resonated with you and this is definitely one that resonated with me. And so there we go, that is my favourite reads of 2022, my 20th favourite to the 11th favourite. And so the next part will be coming hopefully next week. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. As I said earlier on, let me know if you've read any of these books, let me know if you've got any similar recommendations and let me know if any of these are on your TBR. And also I've got another question for you. Let me know some of your favourite reads of 2022. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you're enjoying watching the channel. Do subscribe if you're enjoying the content and you want to see more and hit that like button as well. I don't know why I do that like as a mouse. Uh, but anyway, thank you so much for watching and stay safe.